Our society is becoming increasingly mobile. More and more fuel is needed. Every year, Germany consumes millions of tons of oil, half of it for transport. At the same time, reserves of fossil fuels are declining rapidly. In addition, their high CO2 emissions are contributing to global warming. Biofuels from renewable resources allow a more environment-friendly and independent fuel supply. Taking its production and consumption chain as a whole, one liter of biodiesel obtained from rapeseed oil can result in up to 80% less carbon dioxide emissions than a liter of fossil diesel. But the balance sheet is not always so positive. While the CO2 bound by the rapeseed plant gets released again when the biofuel is burnt, it can simply be bound once more by newly planted rapeseed. But how much additional greenhouse gas is released during the process of producing biofuels is heavily dependent on where it's produced and the techniques employed. If a lot of artificial fertilizer is used, for example, the greenhouse gas equation will not be so good. It will even be negative if ecologically valuable land is destroyed to make way for biofuels, for example, when rainforest is turned over to cultivation. To prevent this, binding standards must be drawn up. Since the 1st of January 2011, the new Sustainability Directive for Biofuels has laid down uniform standards for sustainable production. It's very important to have a biofuel sustainability ordinance because there have been also undesirable developments with biofuels during the past years. For example, the deforestation of rainforests in South America and Asia. And that's not in the interest of climate protection. And for this reason, it is very important to have complete proof for the use of biofuels to prevent such undesirable developments in the future. Produced mostly from domestically grown oilseed rape, biodiesel accounts for the largest share of the biofuel market. It constitutes up to 7% in the diesel fuel B7. Petrol designated E10 contains up to 10% of eco-friendly bioethanol. E85 and pure biodiesel B100 are also available as so-called neat fuels. All biofuel producers must be able to consistently prove that their production is sustainable as defined by the new directive. The oil companies need the relevant certificates in order to credit these biofuels to the quota required by law. There's already so much fraud with bio and organic. I think it's good to have controls and inspections now. Biofuels? This sounds all well and good, but as far as I know, there's still a lot of rainforest cut down for it. For this reason, the evidence of conformity already starts with the producers of the raw materials, such as rapeseed, soy, or cereals, or to a very small extent, palm oil. The growers must declare that the biomass they have produced meets the requirements of the sustainability directive. They have to submit relevant documentary evidence when the certification authorities ask for it. Not only cultivation, but also transport, storage, and trade of the biomass must comply with the regulations of the directive. During all stages of the production process, independent authorities check whether the sustainability directive is being observed. Tests are carried out at the oil mill. During transport and intermediate storage, and the biofuel manufacturer must also reckon with inspections. Besides transport routes, energy consumption during the production process and potential further utilization of byproducts are recorded. All the data are used to calculate the greenhouse gas balance. The final link in the chain, the biofuel producer, collects all the sustainability documents from the preceding production stages. This also applies to foreign producers of palm and soy oil. Finally, all the emissions are added up. All in all, biofuels must emit at least 35% less greenhouse gases than fossil fuels. The new sustainability directive ensures that the sustainable origin of biofuels will be documented without any gaps. Areas used for growing plants for biofuel are not lost to food production. Some 60% of rapeseed, for example, is turned into colza cake or coarse colza meal when the oil is extracted, and this in turn is a protein-rich natural feed for animals. 
In addition, evidence of sustainability also ensures that biomass cultivation worldwide does not result in the loss of valuable habitats for rare plants and animals. Old trees and peat bogs also bind a great deal of CO2, which would be released if these areas were turned over to cultivation. Ecologically valuable forests, known as primary forests, barely touched by man, if at all, are therefore placed under special protection by the directive, just as are meadowlands with high biodiversity, or wetlands, moors, and bogs. However, rising demand, for example for palm oil for biofuels, may mean that production as a whole is increased and that rainforest is cleared to make way for other sectors that are not required to submit evidence of sustainability. Of course, we see that indirect land use changes can lead to displacement effects. I think this can only be solved if other areas, like, for example, the food production, will be integrated in the process of the sustainability ordinance in the future. A producer wanting to provide evidence of sustainability must also produce in a socially sustainable fashion. In Germany, there are already standards. In the production of biodiesel, for example, designed to ensure the health and safety of employees. Some certification systems demand unambiguous compliance with social criteria on the part of manufacturers, including those based abroad. The latter must now also be able to show that they are producing in a socially sustainable manner if they wish to export to Germany. The Sustainability Directive makes the production of biofuels compatible with the environment and thus also with people. I don't like the idea of more and more crops being cultivated for fuels instead of for food. If the rich farmers in South America cultivate more and more energy crops for us, then there is less food for the poor people. I think that if much rapeseed and corn is cultivated, even the food here might become scarce. However, German farmers produce far more food than we consume or export. This is why in the 1990s much land was compulsorily set aside. It can now be used to grow biomass for fuel production. Worldwide, there is a huge unused potential as regards land. Making sustainable use of this potential means creating alternative sources of income, and not just for European farmers. A chance for agriculture worldwide without negative effects on land used for food and feed production. The sustainability regulations set an example worldwide for the eco-friendly production of biofuels. For these rules also apply to palm oil, which is one of the components of German biofuels but only 5% of global palm oil consumption is used for energy. 95% is used by the food and cosmetics industries, where to date there are no rules for sustainable production. Palm oil used in detergents or nougat spreads may therefore come from land obtained through the destruction of rainforest. This is no longer the case with palm oil for biofuel. As the largest producer of biodiesel, Germany sets global standards with the introduction of the Biofuel Sustainability Directive. This is the first time that such far-reaching globally valid statutory sustainability conditions have been laid down for any sector of the economy, and the consequences are global too. Using renewable energy rationally is also a responsibility for future generations. The new Sustainability Directive for Biofuels is a milestone along this road.